In this video, we're going to find dy dx uh, using some calculus 3. So we have the following. So if you have a function of two variables, say big F of xy, and it's equal to 0. So if this defines y implicitly as a function of x, then there is a formula for dy dx. So implicitly as a function of x, uh, then, then there is a really nice formula for dy dx, uh, which you typically don't learn uh, in calculus 1. You learn this in calculus 3. So it's going to be negative f sub x. That's the partial derivative of f with respect to x over, and then down here you have f sub y. And there's a really easy way to memorize it, just I mean, it's a different color so I can show you, just follow the arrows, look, x, y, boom, every single time, okay? Obviously this is the case uh, if, you know, f, y is not equal to zero ever, right, for any x and y, so it can't be uh, equal to zero. Um, let's go through the proof really quickly. Um, so you see it. I'll, I'll put it in quotes. It's a proof sketch. I'm just going to omit some of the details, but just to give you an outline of the proof. Uh, it's going to be a little bit terse, but let's do it anyways. So the idea is as follows. So you let w be equal to f of x, y. And you assume the above, right? You assume, you assume what's up here, right? So it defines y implicitly as a function of x. So then that means that y is a function of x. So you can write this as f of x comma y of x. Okay, so you assume that. Okay, you assume that. Um, and you also assume that it's, it's 0, right? So this is actually equal to 0. All right, then you use the chain rule, right? You use the chain rule. So then use the chain rule from calc 3. The chain rule from calc 3 says if you want the derivative of w with respect to x, okay, well there's a couple of ways to do it. So first, you can compute uh, the partial with respect to x, right, and then once you're there, you take the derivative of x with respect to x. Or, you can first compute the partial with respect to y, and then once you're there, you take the derivative of y with respect to x. So if you recall the chain rule formula, it's usually something like this, except it's dx dt and it's dy dt. And here it's dw dt. So instead of t here, we have x. Instead of dw dt, we have dw dx. Instead of dx dx, instead of dx dt, we have dx dx. So x normally in the formula, this, what I'm circling here is the t. So if you look at the chain rule, um, we're replacing x with t. So we have, let's see what, what's going on here, um, this left-hand side here um, is just 0, right, because w is 0. And then we have fx. dx dx is just 1, so we have 1, plus fy. And then we have dy dx. Then you just subtract fx, so we have negative fx, kind of a terse proof, but it's okay. It's, it's better to see it and understand some of it than not understand it or not see it at all, right? So then divide by big F of y, so dy dx is going to be negative fx over fy, and that completes our little, our little proof sketch of this, this implicit differentiation formula. Let's go ahead and do an example, uh, one that actually looks kind of hard. Uh, it's one with uh, trig functions everywhere. So we have this uh, calc one problem, right? It's really a calc one problem. Secant of xy uh, plus the tangent of uh, xy. Okay, and I haven't done this before. Uh, plus one equals three. Okay, plus 1 equals 3. And the question in this problem is to find dy dx. So find dy dx. 
So if you know calculus one, you can take the partial derivative of both sides with respect to x, and you end up using two product rules, and it's a huge mess. Uh, let's use our Calc 3 skills to do this. So solution. So before we do anything, um, recall that in the formula, our f has to be equal to 0. So we'll start by subtracting 3 from both sides. So we have secant of xy. Whoops. I almost put a comma there. There's no comma. <laughs> it's, x, it's x times y plus the tangent of xy minus 2, and this is equal to 0. So this whole thing here, this is going to be our f of x, y. Okay? All right, so now we can use the formula to find the answer. So we know that dy dx is equal to negative, and remember, just crisscross them. So the x is in the bottom, so it goes up top, and on the bottom we have f, y. Right, just crisscross them. Easy, easy trick. All right, so if I take the partial with respect to x, that's what's going to go up top. So let's see, the derivative of secant uh, is secant tangent. So we have secant of xy, so it's secant xy tangent xy times the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So the derivative of xy with respect to x is just y, because the derivative of x is 1, so we get y. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, so we get plus secant squared xy times the derivative of xy with respect to x, which again is just y. And the derivative of negative 2 is 0. So we did not have to use any product rules. We have the minus. On the bottom, we do the same thing, but with respect to y. So again, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, so we get secant xy tangent xy times the derivative of uh, xy with respect to y. The derivative of y is 1, so we just get x plus. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, so we get secant squared of xy times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of xy with respect to y is just x. Okay. So again, we just ended up using a couple chain rules and no uh, product rules. Then you can pull out uh, something, I hope. Let's see, I think we can pull out, um, hmm, I guess we can pull out a y. That might work, right? So negative y. Then we have secant xy, tangent xy. You can also pull out a secant xy, but I don't think it's going to help. Let's just, for now, let's just pull out the y. Oh, I see it. I see what's going to happen. This is really cool. Just noticed it. And then on the bottom, we can pull out an x. So we have secant xy, tangent xy, and then plus secant squared xy. And all of these are the same. These all cancels. So we just get negative y over x. And that is the final answer. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.